Hey everybody, happy Saturday. How's everyone doing today? Um, for those of you concerned yesterday, Norman is out of his time out and wandering around my feet again. So I'm sure he will be making some appearances throughout today. So today we are we're going ultimate comfort food. So a couple things uh, today that I think are important to talk about. Um, one, woke up, showered, put pajamas back on. So I'm in full pajamas today with slippers. We got the whole situation. Um, so I figured comfy day, kind of curl up day on Saturday, um, comfy dish. So we are going to make some homemade tomato soup with grilled cheese sandwiches. Pretty straightforward, a couple little fun spins um, that I'm going to put on them, but nothing crazy. Going to give you guys tons of pantry options like we do every day. That's what this is all about. It's, it's about learning some fun techniques and then using what you have available to get an awesome dish on the family for you, on the table for your family. Mouth ain't working. <laughs> um, so one onion cut up. This is about a medium onion. I'm going to go medium high heat. We're going to let that get hot. I'm going to add some oil. Then we'll add the onion. So here's the ingredients that I have for straight up and then I'll give you some options. So we have an onion, garlic, um, a little bit of oregano, uh, whole peeled crushed tomatoes, a cup of milk. I'm using chicken stock. You could use veg stock. You could use water. Um, the milk you could eliminate. You could use oat milk, different types of milk. You could use cream if you want it, richen it up even a little bit more. So a lot of options there for the soup. I also like to put a little bit of hot sauce in my tomato soup. That is, uh, you can do it or you don't have to. Pick your favorite hot sauce, whatever one you have in your fridge, or if you don't like things spicy, eliminate it completely. Um, another fun thing, once we puree this soup up, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll add a soft cheese to the puree. Lizzie just came out in her pajamas too. It is truly a full pajama day. Um, if, when you're blending the soup, if you wanted to add a soft cheese to bump it up a little bit, you could. You could do a crumbled blue cheese or a goat cheese or ricotta or mascarpone, um, any of those would work. So a lot of variations here on how you can make your tomato soup totally custom for you. So my pan is hot now. I'm going to add some fat, some oil. I'm using grapeseed oil and that's the last of the grapeseed oil. So everyone's been asking uh, for the first whatever 12 days, Michael, why do you use grapeseed oil? I said, that's just the oil I currently have. We will no longer be using grapeseed oil starting tomorrow. We're moving to a new oil now. Um, the onions are going to go in the pan because the oil's hot now too. You can hear the sizzle, that's what we want. With a pretty nice pinch of salt. And then we're going to just let these break down, get translucent, very aromatic. Um, if they get a little color on them, fine, but I'm not going full caramelization here. The reason that we add the salt there is to pull out some of the natural moisture in the onion, which is also going to pull out some of its natural sweetness, and we're maximizing uh, the flavor, like so. Oh, it's Dana's birthday. Can we give her a little shout Happy out? Happy birthday, Dana. How are you doing? And so, everyone's complimenting your sweatshirt, of course. Oh, uh, well, people in the Cleaver are obviously watching. I got my Cleaver pajama sweatshirt on. <laughs> Um, I was going to wear a brown sweatshirt, but I didn't know if I, like, because this is on uh, Facebook's Food Network page, I didn't know if we'd get in trouble with the NFL. <laughs> and I almost just cut myself. Um, all right. So garlic gets sliced. Um, again, I'm using fresh garlic because that's always what I prefer. If you can't find it at the store because of limited supplies, supplies you can use garlic powder, garlic salt. Um, <clears throat> you could also use garlic that is, you know, those of you that have been watching me forever, pre-chopped, pre-roasted, pre-sliced, pre-all that stuff, garlic. I'm not a fan of it, but this is, we're in a different time right now. We have limitations, so why? And so a lot of people go, why aren't you a fan of it? And a lot of times the garlic that is pre-sliced or pre-chopped or pre-peeled, because they do it with heat and Sometimes chemicals are different things. It tends to have a very hot, biting taste to it, which isn't how garlic should taste. So 
It doesn't taste like regular fresh garlic. In goes the garlic. Monique's asking if she could have used shallots or purple onion instead. Monique, great question. Any onion that you have, you could use shallot, you could use red onion, white onion, leek, pearl onion, pick an onion, any onion, get it in there. <laughs> if you're using um, a dry spice, now you could put it in, whether it would be oregano or um, za'atar or a blend or marjoram or dry basil, any of those go in there. That little squeak you heard is I unfortunately stepped on my little guy because he was under my feet, but he appears to have recovered nicely. Oh, and okay. he's maybe found something on the ground. <laughs> yeah, you know, it was around. As long as it's not garlic, we're okay. All right, so we keep stirring this around, keeping it moving. And you can see how much those onions have broken down already in no time at all. The reason that I put the dry spice in early is because now the dry spice hits the oil, which helps it open up and blooms, which maximizes the flavor of the dry spice. So that is important. What do we got question? Um, Mitchell's asking, who does the cleanup at home? Is it Liz, Liv, or Norman? <laughs> um, Liv, I'm going to let you answer that question. Who does the cleanup around here? It's usually Michael. <laughs> Liz... <laughs> I'm a, I'm a pretty I'm pretty tidy in the kitchen for cleaner. Liz is too. Like we we run a um we run a clean shop here in the Simon House. You know we like to keep things pretty tidy. The, the the real the you know we're just doing these little dinners for four essentially. So to clean up takes no time at all. It's just staying on top of stuff. What um. Else do we got? We have, Maureen is wondering, she doesn't have hot sauce, but she has fresh fresh basil. Could she put that in her soup? Yeah, fresh basil would be delicious, but we'll add it on the blend. And I'll tell any fresh herbs that we want to add, basil, like soft fresh herbs, basil, uh, parsley, cilantro, tarragon, we'll put that in when we blend it. If you wanted to put in hard fresh herbs, oregano, marjoram, and so forth, we would have added those earlier. So um, here goes our crushed tomatoes. And Tammy's asking, she has whole frozen tomatoes. Could she use that? Absolutely. You have whole frozen tomatoes. You could add those. Put in the tomato. Now we're also gonna, we're gonna put, I'm gonna use the stock. I'm just gonna pour the stock in the can so I can get out all the goodies. Ooh, Joe's asking, what's your favorite cheese for grilled cheese? Um, it just depends on my mood. You know, cheddar, typically I was, I'd say cheddar. But I, I'm, I'm not afraid of using a good old-fashioned American cheese either. Don't get me wrong. Um, sometimes I'll make a slightly fancy blue cheese with, with, or grilled cheese with blue cheese and apples in it, which I really like. Um, but when I'm just looking for the classic, either cheddar or American, and I keep it pretty simple. But the nice thing about grilled cheese is you kind of put anything in it you want. I mean, if you don't just want to make a straight grilled cheese, you know, you could put shaved onion in it. You could put fresh herbs in it. I'm going to put a little grainy mustard in mine today. Just kind of depends on, on how you're feeling. So we go salt. We go pepper. Karina's asking, she has some peppers that are on their way out. Could she roast Boom. them and add them? Put them in. Absolutely. If you wanted to do a roasted pepper soup, you could do this exact same recipe with roasted peppers instead of tomatoes. Um, another great trick is putting my milk. Another great trick is um, a lot of times what I'll do if I have the tomatoes that I found at the store can were all crushed. But if I was uh, favorite hot sauce, a couple shakes or my favorite hot sauce today, I should say. I have a lot of hot sauce, just depends on my mood. Um, if I have whole peel, can whole peel tomatoes. Sometimes what I'll do to bump up the flavor, or just change the flavors in the soup, is on a sheet tray, I'll take the whole peeled tomatoes, the onions, and the garlic, toss them in olive oil, throw in about a 450 degree oven for about 30 minutes or so, and they kind of roast and caramelize a little bit, brings up the sweetness. Then we kind of proceed and make the soup also delicious. It's almost like a more of a, like a fire roasted uh, flavor, which is great. All right, so soup is simmering. I'm gonna move this to the back burner. What is it currently on? Just low or? Um, I'm, well, I'm on like, this is on high, but this is a, a low burner. So it's probably like medium on most people's stoves on the back. We're just going to bring it up to a simmer, let it cook a little bit, give it a taste. As it continues to cook, the sweetness will come out a little bit more. So, grilled cheese. I have 
I'm just gonna make one. The recipe is for four grilled cheeses, but I'm currently just gonna make one. You know, make one for Liv and one for Liz when we're done. So I have my four slices of cheddar. I have a little bit of grated parm, but any hard cheese um, works in this situation. I like a white bread for my grilled cheese. Use any kind of bread that you like or that you have. Um, that is certainly your choice, but I do like white bread. Um, I have a poppy grain mustard. So we're going to go with the mustard first. A couple of people are asking if you could make a lot of the soup and freeze it. Oh, this soup freezes brilliantly. So you could make gallons of it and freeze it and it will be fantastic. This is one of the soups we used to, uh, when we first opened Lola, 20, almost 24 years ago, uh, Frankie Rogers, who was my sous chef and chef there forever, uh, he always made tomato soup. At least once a week we had tomato soup. So I go four slices of cheese because I like my real cheese and cheesy. Then I put the top on. Now this is one of those things people are gonna we're gonna get crazy comments with, but we're not scared. We're we're not afraid. So <laughs> sometimes I butter. I just put butter on it and then I go from there. But another trick to toast and to get things to stick is use mayonnaise. Then you don't have to melt the butter or anything, and you spread the mayonnaise on it. And mayonnaise is fat and eggs, so it helps things adhere. And also, if you just wanted to go straight in, it helps things toast. So I do mayonnaise a lot on for grilled cheeses, and I also do it like if I'm toasting a burger bun, um, and it just works really well. It's foolproof. It's obviously you don't have to then melt the butter. It's easier to spread than than you know, a solidified butter. So now look, I take the mayonnaise side, I put it right in my cheese that's grated, and then we mayonnaise the other side. Oh, this is good. And we coat that side in the cheese. So now we have cheese on the outside and cheese on the inside. Mm -hmm. And what's going to happen with the Parmesan is like probably some of you guys have had like Caesar salads or salads where they have that like cheese twill or that crunchy cheese on top. So, or in Italy, they'd say frico. This is going to be like, you're going to get this nice Parmesan crust on the outside of your grilled cheese, which is delightful. Oh yeah. So that's about ready to go. Soup is ripping. What do we got for questions, Liv? Um, okay, so <laughs> a couple people people just want to be reminded where they can find the recipes. Um, you could find the recipes on the page you're watching right now, the Food Network Kitchen Facebook page. You could find them at Chef Simon on Instagram, at Chef Simon on Twitter, and at Chef Simon on Facebook. Simon with a Y. Um, just check. <laughs> Just kind of love. It's just one of my favorite, um, one of the funniest characters of all time. Um, Lisa is asking, how do you keep the milk from curdling? Sometimes hers does. Um, it, it shouldn't. I mean, there is acidity in tomatoes, so it could happen. But if it curdles, don't panic because we're going to blend it, which will smooth it all out anyhow. So you're going to be fine. So don't don't worry about that. All right. Mac and cheese, or grilled cheese sandwich goes down. And we're just gonna let that do its thing. We're over like low to medium heat. I don't let it rip too hot um, because we want the cheese to melt um, while the bread is toasting. If you're not, if you're worried about that not happening, you could always turn your oven on 300, 350 and flash in the oven to completely melt the cheese completely. But you know, one of the things that, that's important with the grilled cheese is that you get gooey cheese. If you don't have gooey cheese, you just, it's, it's just not as happy. It just the, the happiness is gone. Um, Clinton is asking, could you put a chunk of butter in the soup? A chunk of butter? Yes. Sure. I mean, you know, butter's not going to make anything bad. So if, if you want to throw a chunk of butter, throw a chunk of butter. You could also sweat your vegetables in um, butter as opposed to we used oil. But butter is fine. Oh, Here, yeah, this is simmering away. A couple people are asking if that Parmesan on the outside is going to burn or does it just crisp? You're going to just have to wait and see. <laughs> if it burns, I did something wrong. 
and I have failed you. Uh, what else do we got for question? Um, <laughs> oh, Shauna is asking if you could give tips on how to make crispy hash browns. Uh, crispy hash browns. So you want to you grate your potatoes. There's two ways that you could do this, Shauna. You could take the potatoes whole, roast them slow in the oven until they're tender, grate them, and then fry them in um, oil and butter until they're crispy. They'll be crispy. If you don't want to roast them, you just want to go raw potatoes. After you grate the potatoes, you wring them out to get all the water out. So that because if the water is the oven gets the water out, also if you wring them, it gets the water out. Because what gets potatoes in trouble is when you're um, if the water is not out there, they steam instead of get golden brown. So you either got to get the water out by roasting them in the oven until they're tender or grating them and wringing them out. Either one of those will work. Good question. Um, we have a fan asking, what's the difference between tomato soup and tomato bisque? Five dollars. <laughs> 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 tomato bisque has a little bit more cream in it and I'll just charge you more for it. Um, Don't tell anybody, but that's just the fact of the matter. <laughs> oh, it's tomato bisque, $9.95. <laughs> tomato soup, $1.95. Um, um, a couple people are asking, did you put oil in the pan for the sandwich before? No, uh, good question. I'm using a nonstick pan and I went absolutely no oil. And because we don't need it in this situation, oh boy, we're about ready for the flip, Liv. Okay, Liv, I'm ready. Are you, are you excited? I think you're kind of excited. Liv, let me know before we started cooking today that grilled cheese and tomato soup is one of her favorite things in the world. Oh my God, and look, my shirt goes well with this. And you have a nice tomato shirt for my buddy <laughs> Tony at some. All right. There you go. Oh, Boom. Look at that. Just, you know, and you can't tell from there, but it's crunchy from the cheese exterior, which mm -hmm. is what we're all about. All right, so now I'm gonna take the soup and we got a puree. So, um, we have a fan asking if they could use an immersion blender immersion instead. Immersion blender would work great. Okay. Absolutely. I, mean, I actually wish I was doing an immersion blender right now. Um, you could even serve the soup, you know, it could be rustic and you cannot blend it at all. Like, the blending isn't something that you have to do. It's just, a, it just smooths it out. It's a nice addition. And then you could call it bisque and charge it. <laughs> Um, but you, you could leave it on the rustic side too and not puree it. What temperature is the uh, stove on for the grilled cheese? I'm on low. Low, okay. Yeah, I'm on low heat. All right, so we are going to take this and pour the rest of this in here. Other than grilled cheese, what other side would go well with tomato soup? Jennifer is wondering. I think any roasted veg would be good. Um, any sandwich that you could possibly think of would be good, you know. So I think any of those things work really well. It's just grilled cheese and tomato soup. I mean, come on. Yeah. I mean, that's like can't beat it. The thing. So all right. So before we blend this, if you wanted to add certain things, this is what you would add: them. a soft cheese, um, fresh herbs, especially of the soft variety. Yeah, I mean, I have some stuff in here. We'll just show. So. Like, if I wanted to, let's see, I have some flat leaf parsley, so you put the soft herbs in now. Um, if you wanted to put scallions in the food, Mom, Michael's making mine after. Stop asking. <laughs> It's in my fridge. We have uh, a little bit of goat cheese. Ooh, yum. You like that, Liv? Mm-hmm. Okay. So we can put the goat cheese in there now. So these are all just additions that you can add. You don't have to. You don't need them. But, you know, if you have some stuff and you want to use it up, or you, you know, if you find random goat cheese in your fridge, that I hope this wasn't for Liz for something special, um, you just could plop it in there. Denise is asking if you ever put a lid over your pan while you're doing the sandwich. Um, yeah, you could, for sure. I mean, definitely, it helps the cheese melt, too. But what I'm going to do is, this is toasty now, just to keep it warm, I'm just going to set it in this oven while I'm messing with the soup so I can keep that and I'm going to finish the... 
end. So the, we'll mm -hmm. finish the grilled cheese at the end. So this is just going to take a second to blend. Um, oh, Michael, uh, Michael had a small tomato soup explosion. Whoops. Um, it was on the ceiling. That's a good sign. <laughs> uh, but let me just wait for Lizzie. I'm in here. <laughs> <laughs> it, oh, oh. God, it's on the wall. I'm out here. Okay. Get the rest of that later. All right. So soup is now ready. And you can just put the soup in hot in the blender, right? You don't have oh, to let yeah. it cool. Well, obviously, be careful because it yeah. does pop up a little bit. So you don't want that to happen um, like I just did. So now we take soup. Let's give it a taste. Carmen's asking if she added protein to this, what one would you recommend? Protein. Um, in the soup? I think maybe it's for the sandwich. She didn't specify. Oh, the sandwich. I, I love um, like crispy prosciutto mm. um, in a grilled cheese, I think is delicious. Ham in a grilled cheese, I think is delicious. Oh my God, Stephanie has a great question. Could you use the tomato soup in a Bloody Mary the next day? Hells to the yeah. <laughs> I think that's not only a great question, but um, something that I will activate and do tomorrow. <laughs> All right, so there is our soup. Carla's asking, what are your thoughts for brie in the soup? Brie would work. Brie would also work in the grilled cheese. Brie and apples in a grilled cheese is mm. delicious. Um, also, grilled cheese is sometimes, you know, you could saute some spinach, put it in a grilled cheese, greens, put it in a grilled cheese. I, the, the grilled cheese is just kind of a vehicle for anything that you want to add to it. Um, a friend of ours in Cleveland owns a grilled cheese restaurant called uh, Melt and it's all kinds of fun grilled cheeses with all kinds of different things in right. So the cheese is melted. You can see it start, see how it's running down the side? Oh yeah. That's what we want. Mm. Let's see if this other side is close. What temperature was the oven on when you put it in there? I just had it, what, you can't see. Like 300-ish. It was just to keep it warm. Mm -hmm. Like this, the oven is not a necessary step. I was just moving over here, but if you're making a bunch of these to feed your family and you want to keep them warm, set your oven at 250 degrees, 300 degrees, and just as you're making them, put them in the oven, then you could sit and serve them all at once. Norman appears to be very excited about the mac and cheese situation. Um, you're not getting anybody, no matter, I know it's Norman approved, but I'm not going to let you have any. All right, I'm going to get my spoon. Ooh, Betsy, could you add leftover rice pilaf into the soup? Sure, absolutely. All right, mm. both sides are ready. Oh, this is a big moment. Which way do you cut your sandwich? Well, there are a couple of things here. I feel that when you have mac and cheese, or when you have uh, a grilled cheese with tomato soup, get down there, um, one of the great things about it is the dip. So what I do is I go diagonal. Mmm. So that way, I mean, it is, look at, this is the beautiful test. You could see the cheese just dipping out, but I feel the corners are, the, I'm a big, I, I love to dip. That, I mean, that's why these go together so well. So I like to cut it in triangles, so it gives me maximum dippage. Uh-huh. Oh, oh, wow. Oh. I'm telling you, the little... Parmesan or hard cheese trick on the outside. It kind of, it's so simple, but it really changes the game. If you didn't have Parmesan, could you do another cheese on the you outside? Do, yeah, any cheese that is a hard, grateable cheese works. Okay. Um, so any grateable cheese like that that's hard, like a parm, would work. Hmm. All right, well, I'd love to hang out with you guys, but I will be back tomorrow. I've actually been looking forward to eating this all day, so I'm gonna. Um, tomorrow, 5 o'clock, Food Network Kitchen Facebook page. 
could also find more recipes. Come here, Norm. You could also find more recipes on uh, the Food Network Kitchen app. Um, me and Norman, I want to say enjoy the rest of your day. We're going to get through this a dish a day at a time. A day, a dish at a time. But Norman approves. I approve of Liz's pajamas, which she is not going to show us today. <laughs> but they are spectacular. You just have to trust me in this situation. Norman and I will be back tomorrow. Bye.